Let's take a look at some of the innovative features in this new release, version 19 of TC2000. First, let's look at what's new for stocks. We've increased the maximum price history you can view from 500 to 1500 bars of data in any time frame. Just use the scroll wheel on your mouse to enjoy a longer view of the price and indicator activity. As an example, this data increase represents six years of data on a daily chart, a year of data on an hourly chart, and four complete days of data on a minute chart. The bid ask spread can now be used for sorting and scanning. It's easy to create a condition using the spread to find the stocks in a watch list with either the widest or closest difference between the current bid and ask. So why is this important? The bid is the highest price a buyer is willing to pay for the security. The ask is the lowest price a seller will take for it. The spread represents the distance between the two. The smaller the spread, the more liquid the stock typically is because the buyers and sellers are not that far apart. A related criteria that can be used in the same way is the bid-ask percent spread. This value shows you what percent of the stock price is represented by the spread between the bid and ask. So for example, the price of EMCI is $32.75 and the current bid-ask spread is .55 or $0.55. Cents. So the spread is 1.68% of the stock's price. Now, by the way, these bid and ask spread studies can be used for either stocks or options. Scaling on a stock chart can impact how you interpret price history. The Streamline Scaling menu in version 19 puts several scaling modes at your fingertips in an easy to use format. The newest scale mode is called Lock Log, and it's actually an improvement of our Smart Scale from the previous version. It allows you to view every stock on exactly the same scale, so as you step through a watch list, it makes it easier to visually compare trends, volatility, and even swings between stocks. If you set it relative to S&P 500, you get a very quick visual comparison of the volatility of your stock versus that of the broader market. In this mode, you can choose an X factor from 1 to 10. 1 makes your chart smaller and 10 makes your chart larger to accommodate more volatile stocks. You can adjust this X factor by holding down the Alt key on your keyboard and using the scroll wheel on your mouse. Spacebar through the watch list and the S&P plot remains the same, and you'll see the volatility of the stock you're looking at in comparison. In locked log mode, you can view your grid lines in nice round numbers, or using percent grid, space them by some specific percentage. The locked log custom scale simply allows you to manually set the percent between grid lines and the number of lines that show. We'll cover all the scaling modes in detail in a new tutorial video soon. Now the last thing that's new for stocks is a keyboard shortcut that allows you to quickly move through your watch list of stocks. Hover the mouse cursor over any watch list, hold down the control key on your keyboard, and just use the scroll wheel of your mouse to quickly move up or to move down the symbols in your watch list, one at a time or zip through a whole bunch of them. It's a really handy shortcut. Next, let's look at what's new for options. Charting option price history with only the last transaction can often leave you with charts that looks like a line of dots, and they may make you feel like there really isn't much going on with the option's price. But now you can choose to plot your option price history based not only on the last trade, but also on the bid, ask, or the midpoint between the bid and ask. Check out the difference. If I'm a buyer, I might want to see the movement of the ask over a period of time. Plot the ask, and I can see what the sellers have been up to. If I'm a seller, I could plot the bid to get a sense of what the buyers have been bidding over that period of time. Using the mid simply plots the middle point between the bid and the ask. Along with that, indicators you plot based on options can also be set to those same data points. For example, I can plot options delta and then base it on the midpoint of the spread. Or I could plot the time value of the option based on the bid. Quick note. All of the plots, indicators, columns, etc. that are based on bid, ask, mid data do require the additional real-time data feed for stocks and options. Now, further along this line, version 19 has several option-based indicators that can now be plotted on your chart. You'll find them in the Add Plot menu, so you just click the green plus sign. Try typing the word option and you'll see the newest criteria available. Click on the criteria you want to use 
and it'll be plotted on the basis of the option you're viewing, not its underlying stock. So for instance, the volume plot you see now is the volume of the particular option I'm looking at as I space bar through the option chain. Now, don't worry. If you're plotting option indicators and you switch to a stock symbol, version 19 hides those option criteria so that you don't have any blank panes showing up. The last new option feature is a visual plot. When you're viewing an option, you can see the strike price on the underlying symbol and a shaded area lets you easily distinguish the price level at which the option is in the money. For call options, in the money shading will be above the strike price. For puts, it'll be below the strike price. Now finally, let's look at what's new for Mac computers and mobile devices. You can now use your TC2000 on Mac computers, on a Chromebook, any mobile device. You can even run it in a browser. If you go to tc2000.com forward slash anywhere, sign in with your email and password, you'll quickly find out how you can use your full TC2000 software in any of these formats. For Mac users, just follow the on-screen instructions to load TC2000 version 19 and run it directly from your Mac desktop. You don't need a PC emulator anymore. With this new technology, we've given you the ease of TC2000 desktop operation on the Mac computer that you've grown to love. If you want to use TC2000 on your tablet or smartphone, you can access what you need from your App Store. It's amazingly convenient to run TC2000 on your iPad, your Droid phone, your Kindle Fire. And remember, this isn't an app. It's your fully functioning TC2000. Spacebar through charts, view your indicator setups, sort, scan, even trade directly from whatever mobile device you're using on your fully operational TC2000 software. Plus, you can even use your TC2000 now in a browser. Just navigate to apps.tc2000.com in your browser. Sign in with your TC2000 screen name and password. When you see the TC2000 sign-in screen, just log in with those credentials and you're now running TC2000 directly in the browser. Imagine you can now jump on your TC2000 at the library, at a friend's house, just by using a web browser. Now there's no additional cost to your TC2000 subscription to use any of these devices. You can get specific step-by-step -step instructions for all these installations at tc2000.com forward slash anywhere. Now, in addition to everything we've reviewed here, there are a lot of bug fixes, performance enhancements, and workflow improvements in this new version. For more details on those, and for instructions on how to use all these new features, you can go to help.tc2000.com, and you'll find step-by-step -step support articles in the What's New in Version 19 section.